tonight we're going to be preaching on bear fruit. Yes. And if you will, join me to 2 Timothy chapter 4. Well, I see more. do the work That's of an evangelist to make full proof of thy ministry and the definition of an evangelist is a person who seeks to convert others to the Christian faith yeah. and it's not just a preacher or you know, a teacher all these titles that you think of but it's just simply a person that cares enough for other people to go out and minister uh, to those that are lost yeah. and if you're here I mean uh, you can be an evangelist it doesn't matter what age yeah. whatever it is you can still care enough about others to go and witness to them I mean sure. it, uh, a lot of times we're selfish and you know we keep it within ourselves you know we're saved so why should we go out and uh to tell all these other people about what he's done for me. But we need to always have this mindset that we need to go Amen. and tell others about uh, what he can do for them, uh, what he's done for us. Because I know I didn't deserve heaven. I don't deserve right. to go to heaven. But yeah, he loved me enough to die for me. Uh, just like he loved me enough to die for them. Those people that we need to go out and witness to. He loved them. Yeah, he might the Bible heard. says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Uh, it didn't say I love, uh, you know, uh, Ryan enough to do this. It's, it didn't say all that. Yeah. I mean, uh, I can take that uh, to my heart and say that in that verse because it says the world and I'm part of that world and just like anybody else is. Uh, we need to always have the mindset that uh, no matter where we go, there's people that are lost yeah. a lot of times and uh, we need to always be the evangelist. Now, first Jude uh, verses 22 and 23 says, And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pouring yeah. them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Uh, we need to hate the flesh. We need to hate all the fleshly things of this world. Mm -hmm. we, need, we need to strive to be uh, more towards Christ in order to bear more yeah, fruit. Uh, we need to uh, be more Christ-like. The de definition of a Christian right. is to be more Christ-like. Yeah, My dad right. says it all the time. Uh, uh, that right there, that to be a Christian is to be Christ-like. A lot of times, uh, people think you know that the word Christian is you know just being saved or just going to church yeah. or just. Uh, the title is those type of things, but it's simply to be Christ-like. Hey, if you're saved, you need to be Christ-like. You need to, every single day, no matter where you're at or what you're doing, not just in church, yeah. but if you're at school or right. after you're at work, hey, you need to be Christ-like. You, you need to be uh, loving others like Christ mm -hmm. does yeah. for us. I love uh, Christ because He first loved me. Hey, and uh, you, a lot of times people wonder, why, do this, why does this person not like me? Or why does this person not like me? Uh, because we're not showing them enough love a lot of times. Yeah. Or, uh, I mean, sometimes, yeah, people just don't like it for no reason. Right. Uh, but a lot of times, it's because we're not showing them enough of love. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to show the world love like Christ has shown yeah. us the love. Uh, that I mean, I don't understand why He loves me. I, I, I've said it time and time again mm -hmm. because I know I know that I, I deserve hell. Every single yeah. person Amen. in this world deserves hell. Yeah. Uh, but He came and He bled and He died for us and He said that, you know, he loved us from, as far as the east is from the west. Uh, you know, with his arms stretched yeah, wide right. open on the cross. And I'm just so thankful for that uh, this, uh, today that you know, no matter what sins I've committed or what things I've yeah. done or what things I haven't done that he's told me to do, he still loves me and the, just like I, the way that I am. Yeah. And uh, hell is a real place to hey, warn others yeah. about. You know, a lot of times, and there's a lot of people that sugar, a lot of preachers, a lot of teachers that yeah. sugarcoat things. And, you know, yeah, uh, if you so. get saved, you're going to heaven. But that's yeah. not all there is to it. If you get saved, you're going away from hell. Hey, uh, you're going the opposite way from hell. Right. And, and that's what I'm thankful for. That I don't have to go uh, and get that eternal torment. But I, I get to go to heaven. I get to see my yeah. Savior face Come to on. face. Uh, the one that has bled and died for yeah. me, the one that protects me as they were singing. Yeah. You know, he keeps his wing around us. I'm just so thankful hey, for man. that because we don't know what dangers are ahead. We don't know what, you know, mm -hmm. car could come Shemore. at whatever speed and hit us. We don't know those things. But God uh, protects us. He keeps that uh, yeah. wing around us. I think about the other day when uh, I was going to go get my haircut. It was, 
about a month ago, and we were just made mom was just driving across the road, and this uh, uh, girl was on her phone. She uh, came right across, but luckily the yeah. road was yeah. wide enough for me and her to swerve around the car. And I only thought, you know, if uh, God knew what was planned there, because uh, that road could have easily just been a really narrow road, and I could have easily hit a ditch or anything right. else. Amen. But luckily, the hand of God was there to protect Amen. me, and uh, the hand of God is what yeah. uh, keeps us safe. It's not anything else in this world. World, you know, it, it was the, because the ditch uh, or the uh, gap that they had there that kept us safe. No, it was God's hand of protection Amen. that He knows uh, from the beginning to the end. Uh, I know that you know if you think yes, about like, a parade, uh, uh, cash and crowns, uh, they uh, a lot. I think that. I don't remember his name, but Mark, the lead singer, he was talking about how, on one of the songs how uh, he sees the beginning from the end, and yes, uh, uh, you no, know, the parade. Uh, he talked about him, him and his parents. They went, they went up on top of a roof, and they seen uh, the beginning of the parade to the end, mm -hmm. and they knew everything in between. And that's the way God is. Yeah. He knows the beginning to the end, and everything in between. He yeah. knows those trials and those tribulations we're facing, so he knows what it is that can help us through those things. Uh, we, and if we uh, want to get closer to God, if we want to bear more fruit, we're going to have to, uh, you know, we're going to have to strive to be more Christ-like and to be more loving towards others and to warn uh, them about how hell is a real place. Yeah. And if you will, turn with me to John chapter 15. Bless you, Lord. Amen. John 15 of verse 2. John 15, 2 says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purchased it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Uh, and this is simply talk about, you know, the bad habits, the sin, sure. and uh, the time we're not willing to put toward God. And simply everything that is between us and God, all those things, uh, that are in our life need to be cast out in order to bear more fruit. I mean, if you think about an apple tree, you have to prune uh, the bad and the dead uh, branches off of it. You have to do that in order for it to grow and uh, be more fruitful. And that's the same way with us Christians. If we want to be more fruitful, we're going to have to get rid of those things that are uh, keeping us from being more fruitful, which is, uh, you know, the bad habits and uh, whatever it may be. You know, uh, there's several things that it's all different for each and every single one of us. Uh, I, I might, it might be the same thing, but it's not the same situation a lot of times. Right. Uh, we need to always uh, remember that if we're wanting to bear more fruit, if we're wanting uh, to show more love uh, towards the lost, if we want to show more love uh, towards those that are, you know, uh, that are going through uh, different things or whatever, we have to get rid of the things in our life first. We have to get rid of those things that are holding us back. Uh, because I know for sure, with, in myself, a uh, lot of times, I don't give enough time towards God. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I can do this thing uh, before I go and uh, study. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll do this later. I'll do this later. And uh, all these things, I put I put a lot of times the things that God asked me to do uh, after all the other things that yeah, I have to do. Uh, but we need to put Him first. We need to put His priorities first. And we need to always stay in His Word. And uh, before I jump in hand myself, uh, uh, turn to 1 Peter chapter 3, and verse 15. Yes, amen. First Peter chapter three and verse fifteen. Yes, amen. And it says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that ask you asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to put God first and you always need to be ready to give an answer. And you might ask, hey, how are we supposed to be ready to give an answer? we got to stay in God's Word. He didn't just give this to us wow. so that we could just keep it on a shelf and let dust get on it and all those things. We need to read it every single day. When we get up hey, in the buddy. morning, we need to start reading God's hey, Word Lord. because that's a good way to start the day. Not, yeah, you know, uh, just getting ready because I mean, uh, we just need to uh, this should be the very first thing that starts our day. Uh, the, uh, every, God 
God should be the very first thing on our mind when we go through the day. Because if it's the first thing, then it's going to be the last thing. It's going to be the thing in between. Uh, We need to always keep Him first if we want our life and our tree to be more fruitful. Uh, Our life is like a tree, and uh, we just have to get those things out of our lives that are hindering us from being more Christ-like. And we have to sanctify ourselves towards God and not the things of this world, uh, like the hobbies that we go and do, like the sports or the uh, hiking or whatever it may be. A lot of things we can put... uh, in front of God. It doesn't matter what it may be. Yeah. We can always put something in front of God. Uh, I mean, a lot of times we can go hiking to seek God. I mean, there's things that we can do uh, to seek God. Uh, I mean, a lot of things are different. Yeah. Because, uh, I know, I'm sure Papa's got a message out of hiking. I'm sure he's came and he's, uh, you know, thought about the flowers and how beautiful God's creation yeah. is. And uh, there's so many things that God has created that is for us that is spiritually that we don't even think about. Uh, but if we have the mindset of being a Christian, if we have the mindset of you know the spiritual things instead of the physical things, then we're going to bear a lot more fruit. Yeah, but, and we're going yeah. to be able to uh, share to others what God has gave to us. If yeah. we think more spiritually than uh, uh, you know physically, if we start thinking more spiritually, it will yeah. only benefit yeah, but, us. And uh, if you will, turn with me. This last place we turn. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Thank you, Lord. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And it says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commend thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Thank Christ. You, Lord. It's not easy being an evangelist, mm-hmm. and, but it's going to be worth it all when we hear, when we get to heaven. Amen. And home, my good and faithful servant. Yeah. All of our struggles, all of the tears from our eyes will be wiped yeah. away. And that's if you can't rejoice in that, I don't know what you can rejoice Amen. in because there's so many troubles, so many trials in this life. But one day we will be able to hear God say, yes, "Well, oh, oh, my good faithful and good and faithful servant." Right. Uh, you know, uh, you, so many things that we go through each and every day, just trying to be an evangelist, and you know, just trying to because uh, a lot of times. Uh, me, myself, uh, like like last year, I was trying to witness to a kid in one of my classes, and uh, you know he didn't automatically respond like I was hoping for uh, to yeah. uh, do because God led me to that uh, person to uh, to be a witness to, yeah. and I knew that he was going to use me. But just because he didn't get saved right then and there doesn't mean Amen. I didn't want to see. That we should be discouraged when we go and we witness to other people because we're uh, that God may may just want us to plant a seed. We yeah. should always be encouraged when God wants to yeah. use us. We shouldn't be discouraged. You know, I, I can't do this. I can't uh, put enough time in. Like I said, we have to get rid of those things that yeah, are holding right. us back from being the Christian and being Christ-like like God would have us do. Yeah. If we want to be more fruitful, we're going to have to put more effort and time in, uh, to what God wants us to That's be. Sure. And it's not going to be always easy. It's not going to always be easy going. And we're always going to, you know, uh, this is so easy, you know. Uh, but that's not how it's going to be. Amen. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. There's going to be tribulations, but it's all worth it uh, to hear and to see our blessed Savior when we get to heaven. Yeah. And all our church will be wiped away. Yes. That's what I've got. Amen. Your Bibles to the book of Mark, chapter 1. There, when Ryan got started, I thought he was going to preach all over my message. <laughs> Tonight, I'm going to be preaching on if Jesus is in the house. Yeah, I like Mark chapter 1 and verse 40 says, And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, Thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And he straightly charged him forthwith, and sent him away, and saith unto him, See thou, say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priests, and offer thy cleansing, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But he went out and began to publish it much and to blaze abroad about the matter. 
Insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but, with, but was without in desert places, and they came to him from every quarter. Right here, what, the, what happened is Jesus cleansed this leper. And he told the leper, what they had to do in that day, the lepers had to go to the priest. Right. And the priest had to verify them as cleansed. Yep. Their lepers. That was the only way that they were able to go back into the place where with your average people. Mm -hmm. The people, the yeah, lepers right. were segregated from everyone else. They yeah. were pushed away, they were pushed aside. Nobody was allowed to touch a leper where that person was considered unclean. Mm -hmm. And Jesus told him, he said, go to the priest. Jesus knew that he was cleansed. But what, it, but what Jesus was trying to get him to do, he was trying to get him to go so that others could see. Yeah. So that everyone else would be verified. Because if that leper went, what he did, he went and he started telling people about it. He, started he did exactly what Jesus told him not to do. Yeah. Jesus told him to go. He told him to go to the priest so that that can be your testimony. And that leper went and he went and he came. And he tell, talk, went. on his way he was telling everybody else. He was telling everybody else what happened. And for whatever reason... Jesus was no, allowed, no longer allowed in the city. He was no longer be able to be in the city. So, in, in our lives, we, do, we are allowing this same thing to happen. We are allowing God to be shoved out of, out of right. our school, right. out of the workplace, yeah. out of everyday life. We're allowing God to be shoved out. And Jesus came out into the desert places and He said the people came from every quarter. Yes. We are allowing the people coming from the quarters. We have to come to our churches. We are allowing ourselves to be put aside. And just to come to church, and this is the only place that we're able to come out with. We're, that's the only place we're able to worship. Yeah. We are. We can do it wherever we want. We're allowing people within their judgment to hey, keep man. us from serving God. Yeah. Right? That we are allowing God to be taken out of everything in our lives, mm -hmm. and that's when we face the most of our problems. When we whine and we complain, and we say the world's trying to shove Jesus out of everything, but we're allowing it to happen. Hey, man. If you got out on the side of the street and started preaching, you may be ridiculed for yeah. it. But if you continue to do it, nobody's going to stop you. Amen. Nobody, even if somebody comes up and says a smart eloquent remark to you, somebody says something mean to you, yeah. that doesn't matter. You're, as long as you're doing what God would have you to do, that's what matters. That's it. We're allowing ourselves to come to church on Sunday, and throughout the week at work, we're trying to hide ourselves. We're trying, yeah. We have to try to hide ourselves to get other people's lives. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we get, we face the popularity of things. We face things and we try to say, well, if this person doesn't, if I, if I go to work and I start talking about Jesus, people aren't going to like me. Mm -hmm. People are going to avoid me and they're not going to like what I have to say. And we're allowing ourselves to be separated. Mm -hmm. We're allowing ourselves Amen. to be put aside. And that's when we're going to face the most problems in our Christian lives. And in chapter 2, in verse 1, it says, And again, and again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. Yeah. So what had happened was Jesus was in Galilee, and he was no longer allowed to be there. Mm -hmm. But when he went to Capernaum, it was noise that he was in the house. Yeah. And in verse 2, it says, And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door, and he preached the word unto them. And what had happened was, as soon as people started talking about it, Jesus was in the house, and everybody wanted to come and see him. Yeah, when people started talking about it, people started showing it, they wanted, people wanted to come and see what was happening. And if we ourselves... When we went to church, or if we went to work and we went to school, and we were talking about God, we would be amazed at the people that would want to know what's yeah, up. Amen. Because if you come, to, you come to work or school and you've got this glow about you, and you've got this look that nobody else can understand, they're going to want to know what's up. They're going to want to know what happens. But if we come and we've got a frown on our, day, our, on our face yeah. every single day, nobody's going to be able to tell, to tell the difference between you and a lost person. If you come and you have a frown every day, but if you come in with a smile, hey, if you come in and you're happy about your life, even if everything hey, in your life is falling apart, there is something to be happy about. Yeah. Because God has blessed you. He saved your soul and there's something to be grateful for. No matter what else you face in your life, no matter what problems may come your way, yeah. you have been saved. Hey, and if you, no matter what else is going on, you can worship and be able to serve God because He saved you on the worst yes. No matter what else is going on, you should be able to serve God. It should never be a burden. It should right. never be something that you're ashamed of. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And we ought to live our lives every single day unashamed. Yeah. We, should, we should be willing to stand up because Jesus is in the house. When we, when we go out to work, we ought to be able to tell people what's happened to church. Yeah. If we have a good service, we ought to be able to, be able to tell. It don't matter who it is. Lost or saved, we ought to be able to tell people. Mm -hmm. This is what's happening in the church. This is what's going on. Because those people want to know what's happening. Yeah. Curiosity gets every person yeah, yeah. what they are. Everybody is curious. Yeah. Everybody wants to know. And if we will get curious, people curious yeah, about the right things, you will be amazed at the impact that we have in yeah, your lives. Amen, if you will, turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 3. Thank you, Lord. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 says, 
Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power of work within us. Unto him be the be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. It says, Unto him be the glory in church. It, you know, even in church, we ought to be glorifying God. And no matter right. where we go, we ought to take that with us. When we come to church, we come to worship. That is the one and that is the only thing we do is we come to worship and do what God would have yeah. to do in the service. Yeah. And then after that, we don't just sit down and we don't hide in our corners. We ought to get out, we ought to tell people what's happening. We ought to tell people about Jesus. Sure. Because there is something different about us. And we, it shouldn't be something that people can't tell a difference in. People should ought they should yeah. be able to look at you and know that there's something different. And when we, when we will get down, we'll get serious with God, and we'll start telling people about God, it will, we will be amazed at the difference you make. Thank you, Lord. Like Ryan said, you may not see that impact now, but you will be amazed at the seeds that you plant. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you don't see the fruits immediately, you have planted a seed. And there's a difference that you're making in that person's life. Amen. So tonight, if you have not been noising about that Jesus is in the house, I ask you that you would start doing yes. that in life, that you would tell others, because we ought to have a, we ought to have a burden for those lost people, for the Amen. people that have been out of church for a while. We ought to be having a burden Amen. for those people and want to be, draw them back into God because that is our goal as Christians in our life right. is to bring others to Him because we ought to be excited and we ought to be happy Thank about what God has done for us. And that's what I've got. Amen, buddy. Thank you, Lord.